How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another Play Arts Kai review. Today, taking a look at the 1987 Robocop figure. This was released with the remake 1.0 and 3.0 Robocops. Um, I forgot when the movie came out. Uh, it was like 2015, 16, I don't know. Maybe it was before that, but I don't have those. I may end up picking the 3.0 up just because I like the black deco. Uh, but I knew I had to have the 87 version here because it's just, he's, he's iconic and I like Robocop. So um, really great figure. A um, lot of good things about it. Um, some negatives, but it's it's mainly positive. But before we get into the figure, let's take a look at the box because I like looking at the boxes, especially the ones that have the um, the window flap because you get a little more, a um, little more out of the box instead of just a typical window box. But you get a nice uh, package here with the figure of the, the toy figure right there. You get the Square Enix logo up top, which you can't see because I'm out of, out of frame, but it's right there. Um, this is the older style window flap, so it has the Velcro, which I absolutely hate because the glue kind of comes undone and then you get it's just a mess. But um, on this side, you get to see where the figure would be. You got the nice OCP logo down there. Uh, then then you get a nice little write up from the movie and um and such so and on the back more pictures of the figure which is cool and then on the bottom don't forget the machine stamp for authenticity's sake all right let's get that out of the way bring the figure back in all right very nice figure i do love this figure um it looks like it came right out of the out of the movie in in my opinion the only downside which i'll showcase when we get to the size comparisons is he is on the smaller side for play arts kai it was in that weird in between stage i guess um now that they're what they're ranging almost 10 inches and above this one didn't quite make the uh make the cut which um it was unfortunate because he doesn't really scale in with like the DC or Marvel variants and, and all that. But other than that, it's a really nice figure still. He got a lot of nice detail. I love the silver paint work along with the purplish accents to make it pop. In certain lights, you kind of see it reflecting. It's really cool. You do have the, zoom in here, the nice um, details as far as having the OCP police and you can actually read it like on his thigh there, or even onto the side of his helmet. Face looks good. Um, lots of nice detail with this figure. And does he does have quite a bit of um, decent articulation too, especially if you look at his arms, they look kind of weird. Um, and you didn't, I wasn't sure how they would uh, do that um, as far as getting the articulation and not making it look kind of off, but it works. So as far as articulation is concerned, heads on a double ball peg. So you got lots of range of motion there, side to side. Obviously, you can look down. And then the neck piece connected to the torso is actually on a on a ball peg also. So you get a lot more range of motion. If you go too far down, though, unfortunately, it breaks the sculpts. And then you kind of see his neck kind of coming undone, it looks like, on the back. But that's not that big of a deal. I mean, I don't know if you need more range of motion. And plus, you can hide that doing different poses and such. His arms are really cool. It's got this ball hinge, which is the same hinge that we get with the elbow, the wrist, and the ankle connected into the torso. And then it's connected to this other piece on his shoulder, which acts as a hinge and gives him a little more range of motion. So you can kind of have him out away from the body and such, which is kind of cool. I do like that. That was nice. Um, nice engineering there. And then you have obviously the rotation around 360 degrees, all that type of stuff. And then there is also a butterfly joint, which you don't really need too much, but yeah. And then the torso is on a ball peg, so you can go side to side forward, not too far, just because it's hindered by the actual, um, his chest piece there can go back. Again, really nice amount of detail molded in there, even to the, 
the black bits here and such, and he's got that nice range of motion. Uh, the waist or the waist, yeah, the waist piece here is on a ball peg connected to the T joint there. So you got again nice range of motion. Floating crotch piece, so it hides the joint really well. And then going back to the arms again, I said that the typical ball hinge for the wrist, I mean for the elbow, wrist, ankles. So swivels at the top and at the base, and then get a 90 degree, and it's hidden fairly well. And yeah, same thing with the wrist. Um, legs, it is nice that it, they're on a, a ratchet, opposed to the older figures, which is just on a ball socket. Uh, you can't really go too far with it, just because it's hindered by the, the waist piece there, or from the hip, but pretty far out. You know, he's not gonna have a lot of mobility, just because if you've seen the movie, He's not known for his agility there. Double hinged knee. No, maybe not. No, it's a single hinge. Oh, weird. Well, that's different. So you got the double, or you got the single hinge, excuse me. Um, and it goes about to there. Kind of uh, not as clean, but it's okay. The ankle, again, like I said, is on the ball ratchet. And then I love the fact that it's connected to this piston. So when you do move it, um, you have that. You can position this to the side so you can get that ankle rocker. Um, I believe. I haven't really tried it. Um, it just looks like they're pegged in. But they could be glued. I'm not sure. And I'm not going to mess around with it. So, again, he didn't really have the articulation like that. There's nothing in the toe or in the, the foot either. And there's no toe hinge, no um, swivel. So there you go. I guess you kind of have a little bit of a, of a rock since it's going in. But okay. So that's the articulation. You gonna stand? All right. As far as his accessory pieces, he comes with two relaxed hands. Got some nice detail as far as gloss and such um and then he's got his data spike hand which is for his right hand he's got a trigger hand only for his right hand though which is the only one we saw in the movie anyways he never really had his gun on his left hand and then you have his gun Get a nice close up hopefully see that better it's Nicely detailed, but it's just casted pretty much in one color. The handle is a is a lighter gray than the actual, um, besides the rest of the gun. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Nothing really going on with that. And then he comes with all these little different bits that you can utilize for him to store his weapon, which all you do is just take this piece and... pop it off and then take all of these if I remember correctly put them there uh, this one goes here and being a little careful I mean you don't want to break these pegs and then the other one goes right there so it gives you that look that he's opening up his leg, his thigh there for the gun. And then you can house the gun there if you like. Or take that off. Put that on. His uh, hand is in as softer plastic, is not as rigid as some of the other releases, so you don't have to heat it up to get his gun in there, so. And there you go. Zoom out here. I do like that. Um, it's a nice added feature. So you could have him pose like that if you want. So that's cool. All right. Let's move into some size comparisons. Are you going to stand? Man, you look like you're leaning back a little. Okay. Size comparisons. Here's the NECA. So taller um, than a 7-inch figure. And I guess, real quick, you can tell that he is 
almost nine inches tall. Here he is with a more modern size figure, which is Raiden from the uh, Metal Gear um, Revenge Re Vengeance? I don't know, game. And then from another movie figure line, here he is next to the Predator, which is unfortunate. Um, He's, he's not that big. Pred the Predator is fairly large. I mean, even with the aliens that they re released, don't really fit scale-wise, in my opinion, with them. But uh, we got that. And then maybe if you had some of the older figures, like Laura Croft here, that size works really well. So, all right. Um, but it's still a nice figure for being the size that it is. Um... It is out of, um, I guess, stock, you could say, at any of the e-tailers. So you're going to have to find this guy on the secondary market. Um, I think he's a cool figure. If you want that in-between stage of a NECA to maybe a Hot Toys or, you know, whatever, uh, it's not bad. He does come with a player. It's Kai Stan. forgot to mention that. But all in all, it's it's a really cool piece. I love the accent of the purple. It just really pops um, he looks good on the shelf. Um, yes, it would have been nice if he was a little more um, within scale with the uh, current stuff, but still, I like it. But that's it for this look or review, whatever you want to call it. Um, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Check out Plastic Fanatics right here, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, I will talk to everyone later. Bye.